Egan Burger and Weiner LLC is an independent financial services firm which is experienced in all aspects of investment and retirement planning. Today we are going to be talking about Social Security and here to walk us through it is Michael Egan, a certified financial planner and partner at Egan Burger and Weiner. Welcome. We love having you here because you really explain things very simply. Like Social Security, is it going to be bankrupt? Am I ever going to see Social Security? Uh, we don't think so. Oh. I mean, the, the big thing about Social Security is it's funded by two sources. So you've got the tax revenue, the payroll taxes that you know come out of your paycheck and shrink it every time, mm -hmm. and then you've got the trust fund. Now, there's been some rumors that the trust fund doesn't really exist, but the reality is it's actually funded by special issue treasury bonds. I, we've got some great uh, graphics that you've actually brought us that we can uh, actually see these numbers at work. So the first is the OASDI trust fund that gives us all the numbers of what you're talking about. So tell us some yeah, more. Yeah, so I mean, last year uh, we had a year where the tax revenue coming in from Social Security was not sufficient to cover the amount of expenses going out. Part of that was a function of we had a reduction in the tax temporarily to help stimulate the economy. But ultimately, the trust fund still grew. That's because the treasury bonds inside of it paid enough interest that we still had a gain in the size of the trust fund of $69 billion last wow. year alone. And it's so long-term planning, tell me about that. N again, you have a great graphic that shows us uh, exactly the costs and where it goes. So tell us about okay, that. Okay, so if you look at it over time, based on the estimated revenue stream from the taxes mm -hmm. and the, the growth of the trust fund, by about 2017, the trust fund will stop growing and probably start shrinking. By 2033 or so, and this changes a little bit every year when they do new estimates, you're going to see the trust fund kind of go away. At that point in time, there's enough tax revenue coming in to pay for 73 to 75% of all the benefits promised to Social Security recipients almost through the end of the century. Wow. So with a little tweak here, a little tweak there, we can easily solve the problem of Social Security. And Alan Greenspan said it the other day, Social Security of all the problems we have is the easiest one to fix because it's just a math equation. Little change in the retirement date, little change in the tax. I don't think this is going to affect anyone who's within 10 years of Social Security. I want to stress that point mm -hmm. here. I don't think they need to make any adjustments, but for younger people, the system will probably look a little bit different because of modifications we make along the way. Okay, so there are three different kinds of things that, that folks are eligible for. What are those three options? Okay, so everybody's familiar with their own benefit. You mm -hmm. get that statement in the mail all the time. It kind of says, you know, if you quit at this state, this is what you're going to get. Mm -hmm. and, and most people focus just on that. But if you're planning, and you should be planning for your Social Security checks, you should be looking at two other possible benefits that you might be entitled to. Okay. The first is your spousal benefit. So obviously if you're married to somebody now, you're eligible for a spousal benefit. Mm -hmm. uh, or if you were actually divorced from someone in the past and are not currently married at the time you apply for benefits, if you were married to that person for at least 10 years, you could also get divorce spouse benefits. And the last benefit is the survivor benefit. Okay. So in the event that, let's say you're married or were married and your spouse has a bigger check than you, in the event of their death, you end up with the larger of the two checks, your own or the survivor benefit. So in in many cases, what we'll actually do when we actually plan for clients is we'll say, hey, let's take a combination of these benefits over time. So initially, we might start by taking the spousal benefit. Then we flip to your own benefit because we got the delayed retirement credits built in. And then later on in life, when something happens, we flip to the survivor benefit. Well, all these talks about checks and getting paid, I mean, is there enough money really in there? Are we going to be able to have any quality of, of living? Oh, definitely. So I remember back in the 90s, you know, when the stock market was going crazy, people would just off the cuff say, well, you know, Mike, Social Security really doesn't matter to me because right. it's kind of something small. My mm -hmm. investments are really the primary focus. Well, obviously, the stock market hasn't gone as well in the last 10 years as it did during the 90s. So we're looking at things a little bit differently. Guaranteed income is a huge thing that really helps solidify our retirement. And Social Security, the great thing about it is it's a check that's never going to run out. You don't have to manage the investments. You don't have to do any of that. The second thing is that the check has built into it a cost of living adjustment. So over time, it actually goes up in value. You'll see on, I think, one of the graphics that I have that, mm -hmm. you know, over 10 years, your checks are going to total about 300000 if your benefit was, let's say, 2000 a month. Over a 30-year period, that's $1.1 million wow. when you add in the cost of living adjustments. And, and the check itself that might have been 2000 today, over a 30-year period, would grow to be about $4,500 a month. So it's actually 
keeping up with inflation over time. Great. This is a complicated system, and people are really worried about it, and there are many other options. Tell us about those. Okay. So one of the things that you want to consider is you got to integrate your Social Security strategy with your other financial planning decisions, like when are you going to be taking IRA withdrawals? What about your pension decisions? What about the tax? Because, again, it's not what we gross, it's what we net that mm -hmm. really makes a difference in our lives. And putting all of these things together is a key. In the long run, I think a lot of people get a short-sighted view of Social Security. They're saying, okay, if I get it now, I'm going to get as much as I can early on because I don't believe the system's going to be here. I think we already addressed that, that I do think the system's going to be here. And I think the biggest planning risk most people face is longevity, outliving their own assets. So take a Social Security strategy that helps reduce that risk Perfect. and focus on that. Thank you so much, Michael Egan from Egan Burger and Weiner LLC for explaining all these very difficult to understand things so succinctly. More Let's Talk Live is coming up. Stick with us right here.